Hello and welcome to Granada Reports, live with the latest across the Northwest. Hello, thanks for joining us on the programme this evening. Crossing to the other side, Bury Conservative MP Christian Wakeford defects to Labour with an angry swipe at the Prime Minister. Reaction coming up from Westminster and, of course, Bury. Well, it says it all, doesn't it, then, doesn't it, really? He needs to go now. They're the country's most wanted. Can you help police track them down? Five are from the northwest. Yeah, thank you. Have a lovely day, love you. Thank Take you. care. Ta-da, love. Giving something back. The man who fled Afghanistan, who's made a new home in Merseyside. More news about jabs. How tennis coach Judy Murray's motivating the female fighters of the future. And once that rain cleared, it was views for miles today. The full forecast will be coming up later on. Well, first tonight, in a dramatic day in politics, the Conservative MP for Bury South, Christian Wakeford, has shocked the House of Commons by defecting to Labour. Yeah, he did so with a stinging attack on Boris Johnson. He said the Prime Minister and his government had, I quote, shown themselves incapable of offering the leadership and government this country deserves. The drama unfolded just before Mr Johnson announced a major relaxation of Covid restrictions. Critics in the Conservative Party accused Mr Wakeford of treachery and there's been mixed reaction in Bury. Well, we'll be live from Westminster after this report from our correspondent, L.A. Mocox. Cheers greeted his defection, which was timed to cause maximum damage. The Red Wall MP crossing the floor as the Prime Minister faced yet another grilling. Can I start by warmly welcoming the Honourable Member for Bury South to his new place and to the Parliamentary Labour Party. In his resignation letter, Christian Wakeford had lost patience with the Prime Minister's leadership, squarely blaming him. He said the country needs a government that upholds the highest standards of integrity and probity in public life. And both you and the Conservative Party as a whole have shown themselves incapable of offering the leadership and government this country deserves. I think party gate is, is certainly topical at the moment, but there's been you know, quite a few different issues you know, for, throughout uh, many months now, whether that's been uh, the free school meals um, issue, you know, the Patterson issue, you know, party gate now, we've had 0.7, we've had universal credit, the general cost of living. Elected on a wafer-thin majority in 2019, he'd taken a leading role on the parliamentary group on British Jews. His constituency has the largest Jewish community in the country. But it wasn't that long ago that a Labour canvasser in a Jewish bakery was shown the door. Take your leaflet. Thank you. You're the worst you place to, to come into. Me. No, you I'm not insulting you. Yes, you you know what the Labour Party can do? I, I think it's a very different Labour Party. Um, I mean, you only need to look at Keir's first speech and you know, the apology to the Jewish community, and I think there have been large uh, strides in, in the right direction. Yeah, do you know what? He's a brilliant guy. He does what he says he's going to do. Um, he's done a lot for this town. I mean, we're getting a brand new building across the road, um, knocking it all down, getting a brand new building. He's a brilliant MP, to be honest, so Labour's lucky to have him, I think. If, you, if he believes in the Conservative policies, he should, to me, I think he's better staying and standing up and helping change it rather than doing a runner. He's a very naughty boy. And I've really not got time for any of this nonsense. My ladies are far too important for all this to be going on with me. That's what I've got to say. He was one of seven MPs to publicly call for a no-confidence vote in Boris Johnson, but his defection isn't universally popular among his new party. Young Labour, including those in Bury South, haven't welcomed him, pointing to his voting record on cuts to benefits. He's also co-sponsored a bill mandating by-elections for MPs who change parties, but doesn't think that's necessary now. Neither does the Prime Minister, who was back to his bullish self. The, the Conservative Party have won a Bury South for the first time in generations under this Prime Minister. We will win again in Bury South at the next election under this Prime Minister. I'm sorry to see Christian go. I think he's made the wrong decision, and I know because I spent time there, there's still a huge wellspring of support, not just for the Conservatives, but for the Prime Minister. Tonight, some say his treachery will backfire and even bolster support around the beleaguered Prime Minister, with claims letters of no confidence are now being withdrawn 
because of the nature of his defection. Elaine Wilcox, ITV News, Barry. Well, let's bring in our political correspondent, Leisha Minnelli. He's in Westminster uh, for us this evening. And Leisha, the Conservatives were very proud of breaking down the Red Wall in the North West. How important is the defection of Christian Wakeford? Well, that's the killer question in every sense, isn't it, Gamal? Because purely as a numbers game, the Conservatives have a massive majority and they can well afford to lose one MP. There are many looking at the gains of the former Red Wall and thinking, well, Bury South is just one brick. We heard in Elaine's report that it's a brick. The Prime Minister's confident they'd win again. That's an optimism shared by the other Bury MP, James Daly. When I spoke to him a short time ago, he says he's mystified by his former colleagues' actions. Mr Wakeford's actions will have literally zero impact either on this government or what happens in Bury South. I, will, I and other Conservatives will actually do the job that Mr Wakeford should be doing and representing his constituents, being a link into the government to ensure that funding continues and to get the best outcomes for people in Bury South. So ask certain corners of the Conservative Party and you'll find they're putting on a brave face. So there's little doubt that the timing of this is awkward for a Prime Minister already under pressure amid the party gate scandal. When backbenchers are looking to him and questioning his credibility, those dramatic scenes of a colleague crossing the bench, well, they don't really help. We do know that at least one North West MP has already submitted a letter of no confidence. If we get to 54 in total, there will be a vote on the Prime Minister's leadership. Now, of course, only the chairman of the backbenchers, the Orchingham and Sale West MP, Sir Graham Brady, knows quite how close to 54 we are and whether this defection is merely a mild embarrassment or the beginning of the end for Boris Johnson. Either way, it does seem pretty strange that the most watched men in Westminster tonight are Graham Brady and Christian Wakeford, two North West MPs, and neither of them are the Prime Minister. Well, meanwhile, of course, Leisha, the Prime Minister did make a big announcement about relaxing Plan B measures. So is there a danger that this defection and all the anger about Downing Street parties is overshadowing this important message? Yes, you could be forgiven for missing it amid some noisier headlines. So just in case, Boris Johnson did confirm that many of the Plan B measures will be rolled back from as early as today. We're no longer being advised to work from home. Face masks can come off in the classroom from tomorrow and won't be compulsory in public spaces from next Thursday. Now, this could have been a moment of real prime ministerial triumph. The fact that it's not what everybody's talking about tonight is really an extraordinary sign of the times. Aisha, thank you. Well, next tonight, the hunt is on for the country's 12 most wanted fugitives. Five of them are from the northwest. So can you help, please, to track them down? Yeah, the National Crime Agency and their Spanish counterparts say all 12 could currently be hiding in Spain or its islands. One of them from our region is wanted for murder, with the rest known to be involved in trafficking guns and drugs. Our correspondent Amy Welch reports. These are the faces of the Northwest's most wanted fugitives. Dangerous drug dealers and even murderers who are on the run. Criminals need to know that we will never give up and we're never far behind them. Today, the National Crime Agency launched an appeal to track down 12 men, five of them from the Northwest. Many of these fugitives will be trying to blend in in the large British communities who've made their homes here in Spain. So if you're a resident here, you may know one of them from your town or village or place of work. If so, please call Crime Stoppers. They believe the men could be hiding in Spain, but as this footage shows of previous police chases, Spain is no safe haven, and eventually the authorities will find you. 27-year-old Callum Halpin from Openshaw in Manchester is wanted for shooting dead a drug dealer in Ashton under Line in 2018, and for the attempted murder of another man. Then there's John James Jones of Orton in West Lancashire. He's wanted for wounding with intent after he and another man stabbed two people multiple times. Dean Garforth from Liverpool has links to a major organised crime group, supplying drugs and guns across the North West. Also from Liverpool is Joshua Dylan Hendry, another OCG member and drug runner, operating between Liverpool and Grimsby. Making up the Liverpool trio, Mark Francis Roberts, wanted for GBH and attempted robbery of a man wearing a 60k watch. Our pursuit of these individuals needs to make sure that we are going as far overseas as we can to find them, to make sure that the people in the North West 
feel safer within their communities. The public will understandably, though, have concerns, perhaps, that somebody wanted for a crime as serious as murder has been able to leave the country in the first place. They will be looking to evade, looking to duck and die of law enforcement. That includes uh, leaving, leaving the UK. But I think it's important to say that even if you leave the UK, you are not safe. The National Crime Agency say their priority is keeping drugs and guns off the streets of Spain and the UK and are appealing to the public to contact Crime Stoppers in confidence. There's no comeback, no questions about who they are, no personal details asked for. All Crime Stoppers wants to know is what they know. Their last campaign resulted in 86 arrests and they'll be hoping this one has a similar success. Amy Welch, ITV News. More news and a man has died and several others have been injured after a vehicle and trailer crashed into a river when a bridge collapsed in a remote part of Lancashire. It happened in Robendale near Lancaster. Police say 11 people from a hunting party were in the car and trailer when the bridge gave way. Well, next, the extraordinary story of one man's escape from danger after his father was murdered in Afghanistan. Basir, whose full name we're not using for his own protection, fled during the country's civil war. Now he's settled with his family on Merseyside and is committed to giving something back to the community which has welcomed him with open arms. He's been speaking to our correspondent, Andy Bonner. Basir knows what it's like to need help. A refugee originally from Afghanistan, he's been on Merseyside for five years. Known as Baz to his friends, he's helped in the battle against COVID, getting PPE to vulnerable families. I love it to do this job and I love to help the community. We should help others. That's, I think that that's makes us proud of ourselves, you know what I mean? Baz's journey now is far less treacherous than the one he began in 2001. But in some ways, it is no less vital. He fled civil war as a child, crossing deserts and mountains, fearing for his own life after the murder of his father. In the middle of the night, I left with uh, one of my friends. He was only 15 and I was only nine years old. It was a horrible moment. I had to escape because I knew that they come coming after me. Baz has become an adopted Liverpudlian, continuing his education on courses funded by the Metro Mayor and using his skills to give back to a society that has accepted him. Okay. Yes, bye. This is your PPE, okay? Yes, thank you. Have a lovely day, love you. you. Take care. Ta-da, love. Ta-da, bye-bye. Baz is a great example of somebody who had nothing and has come over here and has shared everything and wants to do well for the place that he now calls home. Say it. You know what I mean? so and as you'll have noticed, Baz has picked up the accent too. People don't even realise he's not local. They asking me like, "Where are you from?" I say, "I'm, I'm originally from Afghanistan." You're not from Afghanistan. I don't believe. I said, "Mate, I swear to Allah, I am." Baz says he and his family have been accepted by everyone he's met, but for those who think he shouldn't be here, he has one piece of advice. For five minutes, just. Think before you speak, just think in your head what would you do if you were in that position? Where would you go? Where would you take your family with you? You have to survive, you have to take your family to somewhere else to live peacefully. Baz says the best times of his life have been here in Knowsley. He vows to continue helping those who need help, whatever their background. Andy Bonner, ITV News, Kirby. Finally, to the legendary tennis coach who came to Manchester today to boost women's participation in sport. Judy Murray has been filming for her new TV show at Manchester Youth Zone, where she met a group of young boxers and passed on some of the winning mentality she's given her sons, Andy and Jamie. She's been chatting with David Chisnell. Well, it's more about jabs and uppercuts for Judy Murray today rather than forehands and backhands. As, uh, Judy is touring the North West. She's been to Liverpool. We're here in Manchester today. 
speaking to some of our young sportswomen. Judy, first of all, how's your boxing? <laughs> well, I actually went in the ring in, in the first series of driving course with Natasha Jonas and Joe Gallagher. So I have a better understanding of what boxing demands of its participants. But yeah, I'm far too slow. I'm a granny. <laughs> You mentioned Driving Force, that's your television show on ITV and that's part of this tour, isn't it? So what are you doing? Well, we've, we've come to Manchester this afternoon to Joe Gallagher's Boxing Academy, which is inside the Manchester Youth Centre. And we are we're giving a, a kind of a Q&A masterclass with Natasha Jonas for some of the girls and boys that are part of the academy. And it's all part of... Um, encouraging girls into careers within sport, not necessarily the playing of it, but whether that's journalism, sports science, videos, etc, etc. That if you enjoy sport, there are lots of opportunities to get involved beyond the playing of it. How important a message is that? I mean, we've seen obviously women's sport come on so much just in the recent years. I mean, how far have we come and how far have we got to go as well? Yeah, women's sport's grown hugely since London 2012. Having a home Olympics made a, with so much female success made a massive difference. Um, but we need to increase the female workforce in a big way. We're probably about 80-20. A lot of what we're doing here is trying to encourage more women to get involved in the delivery of the game, whether that's administration or refereeing or coaching. Well, Olivia Holmes joins us now as well, an upcoming aspiring boxer. You came through Joe's Academy, you're now a national champion. I mean, just tell us from your point of view as well, how, how challenging was your journey into the sport and, and, and to where you've got to at this stage? Yeah, so obviously I started off and there was literally like no girls in the gym, all lads, um, and then I ended up moving and then as, as I've gone on, um, there's been more and more girls coming to Rotunda, um, the gym. So it's been really good, yeah, but I don't mind sparring the lads and stuff. I'm used to it now, so it's all right. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, I like punching them, yeah, yeah. Fantastic, guys. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we'll probably better get out of here before we get punched as well. But there we go. Inspiring the next generation. Who knows, hopefully we might see some of these girls being national, international and Olympic champions. Now, stand by for some serious <laughs> cuteness and some good news for an endangered species. It would have been good news to tell you that one mandrel monkey had been born. It's better than that because there are two. Yeah, it is incredibly rare for them to be born in captivity. So Chester Zoo are very happy with their new arrivals. Tim Scott wants to take a closer look. There's probably nothing cuter than a baby monkey. And at Chester Zoo, they've had two arrive five weeks apart. The pair of little mandrills haven't been named yet and it's too soon to tell if they're girls or boys. They were born to mums Brio and Obi in November. Their dad is alpha male, Kamau. These two new little mandrills are just a bundle of joy. You'll see them running around. They get into the stage where they're starting to interact with other members of the group as well as playing together. But then you'll often get mum just coming over, grabbing them, saying, no, that's enough for now and you've got to come back to mum for a bit. The mandrill breeding program at the zoo had paused for over 10 years as the previous alpha male was too well represented in the Europe-wide breeding program. Too many babies from the same father can cause problems for the monkey's health. We try and have the most diverse gene pool possible and so that's why sometimes we stop breeding from certain animals and we'll let other animals breed and why we transfer the males around Europe and sometimes the females just to get as diverse a gene pool as possible so we've got the best population. The breeding programme is strictly controlled and a zoo can only allow the mandrels to mate when the time is right. Now though, Kamau is fulfilling his new role to perfection, although it did take a bit of time. He wasn't the bravest to start with and the girls were quite bullshy, so it's taken a while to get his confidence up and then this is the lucky result at the end of it. Chester Zoo is a charity and most of the money they collect goes to animal conservation schemes around the world. Ten years ago I was lucky enough to travel to Tanzania to see firsthand the zoo's breeding programme for the endangered African wild dog. In their native part of Africa the mandrill is also an endangered species but thanks to the zoo's meticulously planned birth programme and the two new arrivals these monkeys at least have a bright future. Tim Scott, ITV News, Chester. Oh, oh Big Daddy strutting around, yeah. looking rather pleased with himself. How lovely. They're so <laughs> cute. You want to take them home, don't you? Uh, now, from cute monkeys to brass monkeys, uh, here's the weather, would you?
Are you allowed to say that? That sunshine really made your eyeshadow pop, you know. And you put the wipe in the bin, not the toilet. United Utilities sponsors ITV Granada Weather. Go ahead, Queen. Hello, a very good evening to you. Over the next couple of days, the same theme continues, and that sunshine felt lovely today, but it is going to feel very cold, certainly for tomorrow. With one or two icy stretches around tonight where we've seen any showers, chiefly in the west of the region, so the Isle of Man, Irish Sea coast. But for the rest of us, dry, clear, cold tonight, and after a frosty start tomorrow, lots of sunshine on offer. In general, over the next few days, cloud will tend to build, but high pressure, of course, has been in charge of things weather-wise for a while, and it shows no sign of going anywhere, really. Lots of fine, dry weather to come as we roll towards the weekend temperatures perhaps just lifting a little bit both by day and night in the meantime this evening it's cold it's clear one or two showers for the far west but largely dry overnight tonight a widespread frost and rurally could get down to around minus one or minus two so a cold night to come and a fine start for most of us tomorrow morning scraping of windscreens of course it'll be a frosty start to the day and the sun will be up at 8 15 setting just before half four tomorrow afternoon after that frosty start we'll see some lovely sunshine across the board for the northwest of england and the isle of man we've still got that cold breeze though and during the day tomorrow temperatures on paper only get up to around four or five celsius and it'll probably feel more like freezing as we go through the day plenty of lovely sunshine on offer after tomorrow cloud will build it'll be frosty again tomorrow night and then as we look towards friday saturday and sunday still dry a little bit more cloud around, not as cold by night and by day, temperatures just picking up a little bit. But uh, dry weather ahead. Bye bye. United Utilities sponsors ITV Granada Weather. Those eyebrows are unreal. Yeah, hot water bottles ready. Thanks, mm -hmm. Joe. Uh, loads of messages from you about the defection of the Conservative MP Christian Wakeford. Just time for this from Mark Harris. Is it true that he supported a bill? that if an MP joined another party, then a by-election should be called. If it's true, when is the election? Yeah, that is a very interesting point. Uh, thanks for getting in touch. See you well, tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Bye -bye. Very good night. Bye-bye. <laughs>